Hey, welcome back everyone. Rob here from Ram Studio Comics. So in today's video, I'll be digitally painting uh, Doomsday for you. And uh, with this one, I actually was going to start off uh, with an inked version. That's what you see me doing here. I was starting to ink the work right off a, a rough kind of blue line, really rough actually. Um, but then I just wasn't feeling it. I just thought, you know, I think I'm going to convert this to a digital painting. I think even in the very beginning, I was on the fence a little bit. And that's just funny about stuff like that. It's like if you're not exactly sure going into the project, uh, I guess anything can happen. But it, it can really hinder you in a lot of ways. And, and I definitely felt that in this one. Like, like no, I, I don't know why I'm trying to ink this because I'm not really feeling it from the start. Um, and, and also, I just wanted to get back into digitally painting because I, I've been wanting to get back into doing some work in ZBrush. So what's funny for me is the painting process is a lot like sculpting digitally. Uh, and both of them I just have to do every now and then. For some reason, they help me to think more dimensionally about even my line art. Uh, so you're always going to talk, uh, hear me talk about that, that I, I'm a big fan of painting and 3D sculpting uh, mainly just to help my art, but but not even just that. I just love doing it. Like it, it's something about modeling with three dimensional clay and even digitally painting. It's like a sculpting process. Like I, I very much think that you need to picture that you're working with uh, a ball of clay on the screen there, and you're sculpting it. You're chiseling out forms. You're maneuvering things around and and adding and subtracting and all that. Almost the way that you would if you had a piece of clay right in front of you and you were trying to get it to look more dimensional. If you can start thinking that way, the painting process becomes a lot easier. And then ultimately, I feel like that's what you even have to do with drawing. Obviously, you can't just, uh, you know, I'm going to draw whatever pops in my melon. It's got to be a little bit more like you got you got to really be thinking dimensionally in that, in that uh, scene. Uh, it's not the easiest thing to do. What's funny about line art is it's real easy to misconstrue uh, the forms but then with painting it becomes a little bit easier I, I think personally to understand the forms because you have light shadow texture all these things and each time you add something it becomes easier to spot you know something that was wrong I, I, again that's just my opinion you know we all create very differently so you may or may not resonate with those thoughts but um, but yeah you'll always see me revisit digital painting it just it's Something about it is not only just uh, fun, it's it's very much part of the process for me to explore art and to grow to that next level. And then also with digital painting, uh, it's just faster. Like even though I'm out of practice here, this piece took uh, just under eight hours, which really is ridiculously long because I am out of practice. Uh, there's a few digital paintings that I've done that were just as detailed, if not more detailed, and I've done them in two, maybe three hours. And when you start to compare that, I don't know, you know, what you're at for your level of work, but me personally, uh, there's very few comic illustrations that I can bring to full color in anywhere near that amount of time. Uh, I don't know if it's just I'm a, a bit slower at my comic illustrative process, uh, but, you know, things that are two to three hours, I'm generally done with the pencils or maybe, you know, something like that. Uh, but most of them, by the time I get to full colors after inks and color, it's a lot longer of a process. Uh, so that's one of the things I really enjoy about digital painting, I guess, is almost the, um, you know, the immediate gratification in, in a lot of ways. Uh, but again, this one took eight hours. I think, too, because I was uh, jumping around a bit. You can see I wasn't entirely, uh, for one, I wasn't entirely doing sweeping passes over the whole thing. Okay, so I think that's something that's, important to at least experiment with. I think it's very important with digital painting because if you don't apply kind of passes all over the whole art, you can end up with inconsistencies. You know, like for instance, you detail just the cheekbone. As you can see, I've done here, it almost stands out as being, you know, entirely different than the rest of the piece. And then you have to blend that back in. So that can really uh, affect your work negatively. Um, if you become distracted and do that, which I often do, but one of the reasons I do do that is because I'm trying to explore a certain uh, process, and, and I am really I should copy it when I do that. Okay, so say for instance, I'm practicing on the cheekbone, I want to get just the right texture for this character. I need to do that separately, almost like it's off to the side of the page, get that right, and then 
recreate that again and passes over the entire artwork. That gives you that consistent output. That makes sure that you don't over detail and use all this energy in one area and then fade off to the other side. Again, just things I'm kind of reiterating to myself in a sense because I, I saw myself do that here. But I just wanted to share that with you so that you can learn from my mistakes. Somebody should. So yeah, another uh, thing is I got a question when I post this. So I post this kind of stuff obviously on my Instagram, my Ramp Studios, comics, Facebook page, stuff like that. And I get some comments here and there. And one of them was, how do you find the right texture for things like the skin? And uh, are they mentioned liking the texture? And what I want to say with that is a big part of texture is at least experimenting and overlapping these layers, uh, sometimes with different blending modes. You want something to be darker, you use uh, multiply. You want something to be lighter, you use a screen mode. Uh, sometimes a color dodge mode. So that's going to punch up your highlights. So you play around with the blending modes. You overlap them. And the other thing is, is you can't use the brushes too evenly. So I'll notice that people will go to use like, you know, they're trying to build up a skin texture and they take a really fine stipple brush and they go over the whole thing evenly. You don't want to do that. What you want to do is you want inconsistencies and levels and varying sizes of the texture. Even the same stipple brush can give you some pretty neat effects if you vary up the sizes. So one of the reasons you'll see me add in the paintwork over top is I'm layering some of that texture and then I'm using my eye to gauge what's working and then I bring out some of those areas sometimes by just painting in a little bit more of the same thing or a variation in size of what's already working. So again, you get there by allowing yourself to overlap those textures and see into the work and then come up with some good ideas. Uh, one brush that really helped with this one was the Nico Bull uh, brush inside of Procreate. So uh, there, there are certain brushes that will give you a little bit better result, uh, but the main thing is that you vary up the size and the intensity of them and you, you, know, you kind of build up. I never really get skin in one texture with any character. Uh, it's usually at least three layers, uh, sometimes a lot more than that. So at any rate, hopefully today's video has been informative for you. Uh, I'd love to know what you think. Also, uh, if you check out the links in the description box below, I've got some different course content if you want to learn more. Always greatly appreciate the support. As always, keep drawing, keep having fun, and I will talk to you soon.